times I wonder if you understood it. Psalm 23 and verse 3. You've recited it, you've heard it spoken, but I'm not too sure whether you really understand that little verse. Psalm 23. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He restores my soul. In scripture, repeatedly we see God restoring many things. In Psalm 51, God restores the joy of salvation. In 1 Kings chapter 18, He restores rain. In Joel chapter 2 and verse 25, we see that God restores lost years. And Luke 16, that very famous popular scripture and parable, God restores relationship with the Father. Amen. And 2 Kings chapter 8, I think you'll like this one, He restores lost wages. <laughs> so if anybody's robbed you and made you work and didn't pay you, God will restore lost wages. Amongst many, many other restorations, we'll touch on some of these very briefly this morning. And so today we're going to talk about restoration. Because David says, He restores my soul. So that means God is in the business of restoration. Now this word, restore, so restoration is a very interesting word. My whole background comes from that word. Uh, we restored wrecks, cars that were broken and smashed and fit for the rubbish heaps. And so that's my background. I saw in these smashed cars something that can come off and look beautiful. I didn't see the wrecks. I saw what I can do with the wrecks. And then the Lord reminded me about this about 23 years ago when I stood on the balcony of the only cottage on this property. As I surveyed the property, it was during the time when there was a lot of trouble in the area. Blood was shed, people were dying, and here I was coming to look at this property and see if there was anything good in it for us to buy. And then the Lord reminded me as I stood on that balcony, you fixed wrecks, you can fix this place. Amen. And so God was reminding me about another restoration. And sometime this week as I was meditating on the subject, I needed to get onto my phone and get something sorted out. And so I got onto the website and it spoke about if you want your phone back in the order it was given to you, then you need to put it through these different stages and it will restore itself to the manufacturer's details. And then again that word restore jumped up at me. I could restore my phone back to its original settings. And that's the term that the Apple company uses. Restore. Now so that's so interesting. Right when I'm thinking about this term. And so I begin began to get a proper handle or an idea about this 
word restore. So let me very briefly explain again what restoration is. Then we will talk about restoration in the paths of righteousness. And then we will wrap up this message on the restoration of the soul. So stay with me. The Hebrew word translated restore is the word shub, S-H-O-O-B, and it means to turn back to God, to refresh, and to repair. When we restore something, we bring it back to its original condition. I don't know if you've heard of that gospel singer Andre Crouch. He wrote a song some time back titled, Take Me Back. Some of the words go like this. Take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received you. Take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, where I first believed. And so, folks, you can see that we are not alone in this. Permit me to read to you Jeremiah's thoughts from the message version of the Bible. Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 1. The message version reads like this. God's message came to me. It went like this. Get out in the streets and call to Jerusalem God's message. I remember your youthful loyalty, our love as newlyweds. You stayed with me through the wilderness years, stuck with me through all the hard places. Israel was God's holy choice. The pick of the crop. Anyone who laid a hand on her would soon wish he hadn't. God's decree. Hear God's message, house of Jacob. Yes, you, house of Israel. God's message. What did your ancestors find fault with me in that they drifted so far from me? They walked after emptiness and they became empty. Now this passage clearly shows us that God wants us to be restored yes, amen. much more than we ourselves sometimes do. If you remember that, God wants you to be on fire for Him amen. and it will always take a journey back home much sweeter. So restoration, as I said, is to bring back to the original condition. But it means much more than that. It means to take something from the garbage heap and make something special out of it. I don't know how many of you have seen the American show titled American Restoration on television. I've seen it a couple of times and I really like the guy on the show that everything he sees, he gets excited about. You wonder, what rot is that? But he's excited about it. And everything he sees, he uses the word awesome. This is awesome. You see some broken down thing, he says, it's awesome. And you know why? He sees beyond the brokenness. He sees beyond the, the foot. He sees what he can do with it. Amen. And I somewhat get the feeling that's how God sees us. Amen. He sees you and he says, awesome. Amen. Somebody else says, you're rubbish. He says, you're awesome. Amen. Because I'm going to make something wonderful yes. out of you. That's the reason that we read in the Bible that there's a celebration party 
when one person comes to the Lord. Yes, amen. Because the Father is saying, this is awesome. Amen. This is wonderful. Not only does God take us out of the rubbish heap, but He is able to do something that only God can do. Amen. Now, the prophet Joel has some great insight in the subject, and you'll like it too. Joel chapter 2 and verse 25. Joel chapter 2 and verse 25. And you've read this many times and haven't even given it a second thought. But I want to see today because many of you think you've lost so many years. You're sitting here thinking, wow, look at me. But look at Joel, what he says. Joel 2, 25. You think this is not possible? God is saying it. I, not Joel, God is saying it. I will restore to you what? The years. The years. Did you think lost years can be restored? Yes. yes. You think, well, look at me, I've lost so many years. Hopeless life, ruined. But God is saying in His Word, I will restore to you the years that the locust had eaten. Amen. The canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. Amen. Praise God. How in the world can years be given back? You're probably asking. How can lost years be restored? Good question. And I looked in the Bible and the Bible gives me the answer. Oh. Only the Bible gives you the answer. Amen. I find the answer in the book of Ruth. Ruth chapter 4 and verse 13. Starting from verse 13, Ruth 4, 13. So, Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. And he went into her, and the Lord enabled her to conceive, and she gave birth to a son. Then the woman said to Naomi, Blessed is the Lord who has not left you without a Redeemer today. And may His name become famous in Israel. Amen. Verse 15. May He also be to you a restorer of life. And a sustainer of your old age. Amen. For your daughter-in-law who loves you. And is better to you than seven sons. Has given birth to him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him in her lap. And became his nurse. And the neighbor woman gave him a name saying. A son has been born to Naomi, so they named him Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. Amen. So folks, the only way you can really appreciate this passage is if you realize all that Ruth and Naomi had been through. Little background is that Naomi is married and has a very affluent lifestyle in Israel. Unfortunately, times get tough, and a famine catches up with her, and a husband and two sons leave Israel to live in Moab. During that time, her sons marry, marry Moabite women. A husband gets sick and dies. Soon after both boys, her sons, get sick as well and they die as well. 
That's tragic, isn't it? To be in a foreign land and you think you got problems? Here's a woman in a foreign land and all she has is two of these girls. One decides to go back to her mother and the other decides to come and be with her. She returns now to the place of her birth. And the entire city is moved when they see her return. They shock to see her financial state, her personal state. And so she tells the people of the city, please don't call me Naomi. Naomi meaning pleasant one. Call me Mara, the bitter one. Because she said, God had dealt bitterly with me. Now there may be some people here today who can relate to how Naomi felt. But there's a wonderful change in the circumstances. A daughter-in-law, Ruth, is married by a very rich, wealthy man called Boaz. They have a child, and his name is Obed, who is the grandfather, according to scripture, of King David. The women of the city pronounce blessings that we just read in the book of Ruth. And in part they said, may he also be the restorer of your life. Amen. And so, God can be and will be the restorer of those lost years that you have found so impossible to manage. You have found difficult. You have found hopeless. And the world has written you off. But God can do the impossible Amen. for you. Amen. Years are given back by God. How? You will notice that there's so much of joy in your life. So much of happiness that it almost drowns every bit of sorrow of the past. You will sit back and think, look at my life the way it is now. I cannot think about the past. God can restore to you in that way. You see, when God takes us off the trash heaps of life, He sometimes crams so much of happiness that you can't bear to think of the past. Secondly, God can restore lost possessions and wages. Amen. I don't know how you feel this morning and, how you, and what troubles you today, but I believe God can restore lost possessions and wages. Amen. Let's take up the story in the second book of Kings, chapter 8. Second book of Kings, chapter 8. A woman who has befriended Elisha the prophet ultimately had to leave Israel because Elisha told her that God had called for a seven year famine on the land. After seven years, she returned, and others had taken her land. The land that she had and owned, and had the title deeds for, was taken over. And now she appeals to the king to intervene. It just so happens that Elisha's personal assistant had been talking to the king of Israel. And he is recovering.